So hello everybody, this is Luboš Pekl from CFD Support. Uh, I am here in our Prague office with my colleague Radek Máca. Hello Radek. Hello Luboš. Uh, how are you today? Yeah, I'm fine and ready for the webinar. Thank you for asking and how are you? I'm so fine, thank you. Um, so, okay, and together with us on the other line there is Oliver Felde from CF Turbo in Dresden. Uh, hello, Oliver. Hello, Lubos. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, yeah, so are you ready for the webinar? I am, yeah, and I'm uh, yeah happy to be with you together again on that webinar. Okay, thank you. It's uh, great to hear this. So I think we can we can start. So hello again, everybody. Uh, welcome, welcome to the webinar on turbo machinery design and analysis. In today's webinar, we, will, we would like to show you an easy way how to design a centrifugal compressor from scratch in CF Turbo, and then how to simulate and evaluate it in Turbo Machinery CFD. The webinar is being recorded, and its recording will be made available on our YouTube channel. I hope everything works well, all the techniques is all right. In case of any technical problems, feel free to contact us. We will gladly answer all your questions and comments afterwards. So please let me start with who we are. Uh, I will, I'm going to introduce us a little bit. So this is me. My name is Luboš Perkel. I'm co-founder of CFD Support. I am here in our Prague office with my colleague Radek Máca. Radek is our head engineer and senior developer. Uh, here at CFD Support. And finally, in Dresden, there is Oliver Felde. Oliver is Senior Manager CAE at CF Turbo. He is responsible for consultancy and software development, especially for the implementation of Turbo Machine Design Theory and related algorithms in CF Turbo software. Uh, about the program, uh, the webinar is going to take about one hour, depending on the number of your questions and comments. There will be basically four parts in this webinar. In the first part, there is this general introduction. In the second part, let's call it the design part or CF Turbo part, uh, there will be a live example where Oliver is going to introduce CF Turbo a little bit and he will show a live example of centrifugal compressor design in CF Turbo software with final export to the, of, the, of the designed model to the Turbo Machinery CFD. In the next part, uh, we can call it simulation part or Turbo Machinery CFD part, there will be the other live example where Radek is going to show you Turbo Machinery CFD simulation and evaluation uh, of that centrifugal compressor exported by Oliver from CF Turbo in the previous part. And in the last part, finally, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. Feel free to put your questions to the, to the special window, or you can also send us an email to uh, info at cfdsupport.com and we will gladly answer all your questions later in this webinar. Feel free to put your questions, this is quite important part. It's your time, we are here for you, we are ready to answer, to tell everything, so take your chance. Uh, okay, so I think we can, we can start uh, with the CF Turbo part. So I'm gonna hand over the presentation to Oliver. So, Oliver, will you tell us about CF Turbo? Yes, I will. Thank you, Lubos. <clears throat> okay, CF Turbo is, is a company based in, in Germany with two offices in Germany, in Dresden as well as in uh, Munich. Our main product is CF Turbo, a um, design tool for the turbo machinery design of, of um, all components related to turbo machinery. We call it conceptual design software because it's not based on geometric input data but on uh, operation uh, input data and it's uh, therefore based on latest design theory. Right now we have 200 or more than 200 active clients globally and uh, uh, 
CF Turbo, the software is split into different modules. One can use those modules to design pumps, both actual and uh, centrifugal, fans and blowers, again, actual and radial, compressors and turbines, and of course complementary uh, components like stators and diffusers as well as volutes. And uh, with uh, our software we serve the, the following industries, amongst them there are aerospace industry, automotive, uh, home appliance applications, energy, oil, gas, marine, mechanical process engineering, semiconductor industry and so on. So that's quite briefly about CF Turbo. Uh, okay, so yeah, I think it's now it's uh, your screen now is gonna be um, so. Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. Uh, yes, we we see it. It's it's perfect. Okay. So Thank go you. Ahead. Okay, so that's that's. Uh, the, the GUI, if you start CF Turbo, and what you see is the four different uh, machines you can design with CF Turbo. Today it's a compressor webinar, that's why I press this soft button. And the first thing, if uh, one starts to design something from scratch, is the definition of the uh, global setup, where the best point is to be defined because right now we do some sort of a, a best efficiency design. And um, the example I want to show is a rather small compressor that has a mass flow of 0.18 kilogram per second, a total pressure ratio of three, and it runs on 165,000 uh, um, RPMs. Uh, also, it should be, it should compress air and uh, when it comes to the definition of the fluid, one can choose between different perfect, uh, different real gas models uh, given here and also, of course, with perfect or ideal gas um, properties and if I click on that right button here, uh, it gives you also the chance to have access to other gases uh, and also you have the opportunity to, to add new fluids that just have to be defined by some general properties like gas constant or critical values and so on. Okay, also uh, one should uh, define inlet conditions because they are of course important for the thermodynamic uh, calculations. Once that is ready, uh, one is asked to add a component. I want to start with the impeller because that's the central component of that compressor stage and that's why I'm clicking on the radial mixed flow impeller. And again, what follows is this uh, dialog is opened where one has the chance to define the main dimensions. The main dimensions are just the inlet diameters the impeller's diameter and the outlet width. So what I want to have is an unshrouded um, impeller with a certain tip clearance, for instance 0.4 millimeters, and it should have splitter blades of course. Um, on the second tab there are a couple of parameters defined which can be adjusted by, by myself and they are taken from um, a wide uh, variety of publicly available data. So for instance, the diameter coefficient is just taken from the well-known um, Cordier diagram for a certain specific speed that comes again from the global setup. And um, a default value of, of 2.8 something is given here, but of course can be adjusted. Also, what is very important is one has to have an idea about the efficiency which can be reached with this kind of machine. And again, there is some something uh, implemented in the software and also uh, the source is given. This is from Klaus Lütke's uh, textbook, for instance. 
and it's important that those values are uh, realistic and reasonable otherwise you you would not get good proposals by the software when you for instance press this calculate button or if if you just um, have this checkbox checked checked where every um, change of a parameter uh, is followed by a recalculation of the main dimensions and those recalculations are done on the basis of just uh, balance equations and the empirical um, formulas that ha have been implemented. Okay, I want to uh, just make or want to get rid of the decimal uh, places and that's why I'm just making those values to round values. So for instance, 60 milli millimeters in diameter and maybe four at the outlet width. <clears throat> On the right hand side, you always get some information about average values that can be um, calculated just with the use of the, the gas description and the balance equations and so on. And you will always get some sort of a feedback what is um, uh, yeah, in which scope your machine will run. Also, the the average velocity triangles are given at this point. Okay, next step is to define the <clears throat> a general meridional contour. Here, one can define the actual extension of the meridional contour, but not the the diameters anymore because they are set in the design step before and if one wants to change that one has to go back to that design step and has to change it there. At any time one can do a right click and type in some coordinates and the contour itself is a script by, by just Contier, uh, busy uh, splines. <clears throat> Again there are some uh, uh, informational things that can be used to uh, uh, check the design. So, for instance, a potential flow solution for the average meridional uh, velocities or uh, potential flow is given here together with the um, um, vectors of the flow. Also, curves about the static moments and the area progression and so on are given here and they are recalculated after any change of the meridional contour. Okay, once I'm happy, uh, I can go to the next design step and the next design step is uh, the definition of the blade angles at leading and trailing edge. It's important to set the general blade shape here because uh, there might be some um, restrictions which can come from the manufacturing or from the uh, general operation, the, the operational uh, regime in which the, the, uh, the compressor has to be run. So very often the um, compressor wheels are flank milled and that's why one should go for real uh, root surface 3D uh, blade shape. Uh, when this is chosen uh, one can only uh, define blade angles at hub and shroud because in between the uh, blade is calculated in accordance to that uh, blade shape. Also uh, the a blade thickness has to be defined here at leading and plating, uh, trailing edge because that is used for the calculation of the velocity triangles. <clears throat> and last but not least, a slip model has to be specified because uh, there is always a deviation angle between the uh, direction given by the blade and the uh, relative flow and that deviation angle is calculated in accordance to the chosen slip model and what I have done here is the Angier-Wiesner model and if I press calculate then this yields uh, yield some <clears throat> some angles at uh, leading at, plate, at trading edge. 
Once I'm happy, uh, nothing more has been uh, established here, but it gives me the chance to go through the 3D model that has been uh, developed so far. The only thing we see right now is Hop and Shroud 3D geometry plus the location of the leading and trailing edges of main and splitter blades. Okay, in order to um, finish that um, design, I switch to the next design step, which is called mean line <coughs> design. And here again, we have those two, what I would call master uh, mean lines, which are hub and shroud, and only those can be uh, manipulated. So what we can do, for instance, is we can grab this Bezier curve in MT coordinates and change, for instance, the, the uh, rep angle. And we can change the inner Bezier points and uh, get here with some, some other uh, blade angle distribution between leading and trailing edge. Again, on the right hand side, there are some uh, information uh, which can be uh, used to um, check the design. So, for instance, there is a rapid relative velocity estimation on the basis of uh, Stannis and Prine's approach from the 50s. There's again a blade to blade uh, potential flow estimation uh, given here and and also some geometric data can be taken from from the right hand side, for instance, the lead angle, which is given here. Um, at every time step, there is a 3D preview, which I would like to open here. And here, for instance, we, we see the current design. And if I want, for instance, to, to change uh, the, lean, uh, the lean angle at the inlet, I can uh, change the leading edge position of span uh, shroud, for instance, and then it will look immediately like that, and it also will give a different rate, rake angle, and to, uh, to make that a bit less uh, harsh, I, I try to increase um, the wrap angle of the main blade uh, at Hop and Shroud. <clears throat> okay, and then it would look like that. <clears throat> but um, as you see probably here on the right hand side, they are not everywhere uh, with that uh, simple um, velocity estimations. They are not everywhere um, solutions possible because the, the choking throat might be too small. But again, one has to have in mind that this is based on, on potential flow theory. Okay, um, once I'm happy with that, I can press OK. And in 3D, now I will see the blades having a zero thickness. And that's why I put now some thickness on it in a very simple way, just by adding perpendicular to the mean line some uh, the thickness already defined in the blade properties. Again, the preview will show <clears throat> now the 3D geometry of the blades, but now it still has uh, sharp edges. And in order to get good design uh, edges, I open the last uh, design step, and this is where I can give, for instance, the leading edge an elliptic shape, and where I can tell that the uh, that the trailing edge should be trimmed with the impeller diameter. And again, the 3D free, uh, preview will give some impression on how it will look like now. You see the rake angle is quite big here. Okay, and uh, if I go back to the 3D model, I'm, I'm done. So it's uh, my initial design, but it's just the impeller. I want to do a, a complete stage. That's why I'm going to add an pinch type 
uh, stator and the stator sh should be just radial and um, should have a constant uh, area here. Uh, let's take a length of three and let's go to the very next design step. <clears throat> Make it less hard changing and so that's probably the pinch type diffuser and then I want to have another diffuser that should have uh, parallel uh, walls and again it's it's radial and it should have a certain length so for instance 10 millimeter at hop and shroud and I don't need this bezier shape because it should be just parallel and if I go through the 3D model I now have a 3D model including diffuser and the last step would be to add a volute. Uh, here again it's it's structured in a similar way as the, the impeller design so there is first an uh, kind of main dimension uh, definition design step where just the inlet diameter and the inlet width had, has to be uh, defined. I'm going to, to have a six millimeter width and <clears throat> when I press OK I have the chance to uh, define the general uh, shape of the cross section. I'm going to for, for a asymmetric uh, round um, blade shape but I could have different sections and I could also have it uh, non-symmetric and so if I if I use those uh, half symmetric uh, shapes but that's nothing I want to show right now the next design step is the is the um, uh, actual scaling of the cross sections with the wrap angle and here I'm using Flydor's rule with a swirl exponent of one uh, I can get use again the 3D preview and we'll see what happens here. If I press OK, I'm already done, almost done. The last step uh, would be the definition of the outlet diffuser that should have a certain height and maybe also a certain outlet uh, diameter. Uh, Again, preview gives me that component and if I'm happy with that, I, I see how my 3D model has been uh, developed over, over the design process and the only thing that is missing now is just the definition of the cut water here because you see that there is a certain intersection between the spiral and the outlet diffuser. And that's done in the last design step. Here one has different design modes again. The most elegant one is probably the, the fillet radius uh, where you can define a certain radius. And if I do the update, then you see how this is um, done. And if I go back to the 3D model, and waiting a bit, you see here how the uh, fillet cut water has been developed and I'm almost done. I, I want to sh change this thing. It's a centrifugal compressor with a certain uh, pressure ratio, that's why I am call it like that. And because that was based on 1D design theory together with some empirical knowledge of course it has to be uh, it has to be validated 
and to this end one should probably introduce another stator right at the inlet of the stage and this can be purely actual with a certain length so for instance I don't know 80 millimeters <clears throat> and just very quickly finish it by just make that straight and in 3D it looks like that. Right now I don't have a spinner but I could add a spinner here and uh, and and that, that then would be a, a pure pipe in front of that but I want to uh, save time and that's why I'm just want to show you quickly how to start the validation process and to this end one can change from different CFD export interfaces and the one we look today is the turbo machinery design uh, CFD interface. Uh, one has to get rid of the space in the name and I also have to have a, a gap here but just to show you how to uh, proceed with that, I'm open the parameters panel where you can set some uh, STL parameters. And if I uh, sort out these uh, messages here or the things connected with the messages, I can start the export. And then <clears throat> the STL files will be written together with a control file which can be used by by PCFD and uh, saying that I'm, I'm finished with my little presentation and I, I will now give the presenter to Radek. Um, okay, okay, thank you Oliver for the turbo machine design part in CF Turbo. So now we, now we, now we switch back to, uh, back to the original presentation and uh, yeah so now, now now it's time for the for the simulation part so it's the turbo machinery cfd part and before we go there i would like to remind all the all the attendees to put their questions uh, we, we we mean it we would we, we would love to answer them uh, later in the webinar so feel free to put your questions uh, right now and also anytime during the during the webinar uh, so I will I will give a brief description what is turbo machine is CFD. So uh, let me just uh, quickly quickly go through that. So turbo machine is CFD is a unique software developed by Czech company CFD support. It is uh, smart, easy to use, and affordable CFD CFD software. The turbo machine is CFD was designed for CFD simulations of all rotating machinery such as fans, pumps, compressors, turbines, turbochargers, hydro turbines, etc. Almost all of them, or at least all the standard machines, uh, both radial and axial machines, both compressible and incompressible fluid flows. The turbo machine CFD is based on open foam, and we believe the turbo machine CFD is unique, at least for four reasons. Uh, number number one would be Turbo Machinery CFD has no licensing policy, which means our clients can keep Turbo Machinery CFD forever and they can use it for unlimited number of users, jobs or cars. What is paid for is the fast delivery and technical support and software maintenance. This gives the investment in Turbo Machinery CFD, <coughs> I'm sorry, a permanent value of course. And also this means our clients can scale their CFD simulations in a really big way. Uh, number two would be Turbo Machine CFD is fully automated, which means all, all the workflow from the initial data to the final engineering results, it can be run by a single click or by a single command. And all the process is being done automatically and for these reasons Turbo Machine CFD is extremely effective. Uh, number three would be we believe or we deliver the extraordinary technical support. We are proud of it. We feel custom approach to every customer to every issue. We never leave behind any of our clients and we are very flexible in it. The technical support is unlimited. 
and we support our clients even in matters out of the turbo machinery field, for example, in numerical mathematics, physics, uh, general CFD, IT, or even software engineering. And number four would be the real tutorials are included. So turbo machinery CFD user has no doubts about the best practice settings. So there are included the real machines that are already preset. So basically the, the user can take one of these tutorials, replace the geometry with, with his own. Um, he, he, can, he can modify the settings and just run the simulation. Uh, the rest of the workflow is, is automated or can be automated. Um, and the, also the minimal requirements on the user's CFD skills are very low because of this. Uh, and yeah, this this would be it. This this were the, the basic benefits. There, I think there are even more benefits, but I'm not going to go for all of them. Uh, I finish here with my last point that at CFD support we believe the future of CFD is the automation. We believe that in CFD everything can be automated. The automation is is extremely effective. It's even more effective than than we expected in the first place. So just my la I finish with my last point that. Nowadays at CFD support, we only think in automated sense. It, it brings a huge value to to everybody, especially to our customers. Uh, so it was just a brief uh, description of Turbo Machine CFD. Now it's time for the live example. Uh, so Radek, are you ready with your with your contribution? Yes, yes, I am. So please, can you hand me of the presentation? Course. So now here you go. Okay, so I hope you see my screen. Yes, we can. we can. Okay, perfect. So thank you, Lubos, for for introduction, and good afternoon, everybody, or good morning. <laughs> this is Radek speaking. <laughs> yeah. So first, let me briefly uh, let me briefly introduce the outline of my part of the, today's webinar. So I I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with the turbo machinery CFD in general. We are going to sh uh, use the export from CF Turbo, which makes the workflow even simpler. So as you will see with CF Turbo and Turbo Machinery CFD, we are now able to run a CFD simulation and get significant results just by a few mouse clicks. So I will show you all steps of CFD workflow, uh, which is case and computation setup, running the simulation, and results evaluation and post-processing. So let's start. Uh, we simply start from from data which Oliver has generated and exported for us. So this is how it looks like. Basically, basically there are two main parts. First is the configuration file, in which okay. So I will use my favorite favorite file browser. Okay. So the first is the uh, TCFD file with predefined or defined the computation or parameters for the computation for definition of object geometry and so on. So this was automatically generated from CF Turbo and I modified it to, to simulate more speed lines and more points. So this is the first file and the second one is the directory with, with uh, STL files which, which defines the geometry. So this is also automatically generated from from CF CF Turbo. So you can check it by click it, click on on the particle file. You can you can check, for example, the blades and see how the input geometry looks like. So this is standard STL format with tri triangulated uh, triangulated surface. So this is the input. And yeah, we can you can also start from scratch. So to start uh, constructing your own case with your own geometry, but but we uh, with connection with CF Turbo, uh, the job is more simpler. And there is basically for the first computation, there is no need to modify anything. So to start working with the TCFD, we need just to click on the configuration file and new paraview session will appear automatically. So we have developed this graphical user interface directly 
inside the Paraview, which is a standard third-party software directly delivered with OpenFOAM. And here we can here we can set the CFD computation, run the simulation, and post-process the results. So it means 100% of workflow can be managed directly in this graphical user interface. So as you can see in the here in the pipeline browser, the configuration file is directly loaded. So to start using it, we need to click on Apply button. And because all is preset, so after the click, we can see the input geometry, which is built. Okay, this was, sorry, it was too fast. Clicking. So you can see directly the input geometry. And in the right panel, there, there is there is a list of all parameters which is set and its values uh, which are which are set for for the simulation okay so you can change and define any anything uh, which is connected to the simulation directly here in this left properties panel so i will go just quickly through this and i will show you what can be changed and where so there are several menus for example, in general, you can load different configuration file, you can save it, and so on. You should choose which machine you would like to simulate, because each machine uh, includes different setup. Then, then there are several menus which which defines the basics, which is coordinate system of uh, of rotation, which defines some. Uh, geometry scaling if the input geometry is in millimeters or meters physics so here you define define the physics of of the fluid the standard setup is air or water but you can define any any parameters which is related to your your fluid turbulence modeling of course you can distinguish or you can set the k omega sst laminar or k epsilon at the moment the important part is the speed lines part. So here you define the the points of simulations. So first you can define a number of speed lines. That is the simulation with different rotational speeds. And for each speed line, you can define several points to be simulated. So usually each point carries different boundary condition, for example, different pressure uh, pressures at the inlet or at the outlet, different volumetric flow rates, and uh, etc. For each point, you should define the maximum number of iterations to be computed for each speed line and each point. So here I have defined six points for each speed line. And as I already said, each, each point carries the, the different boundary condition. So for example, here we are using at the inlet total total pressure and total branch temperature boundary conditions and at the outlet we are using special outlet van boundary condition which somehow simulated the different pressures but using this this outlet vent it can it can uh, follow the better whole speed line and to and it is it is really useful to generate whole compressor map so here we define the boundary condition. Inside the simulation, there are several parameters, but I would like to mention just one or two. This is processor number. For example, my laptop has just four cores, so I have to change it to four because a higher number makes <laughs> makes no sense to define and it will just slow. It will, it will make the simulation slower. We also provide both steady state and transient simulation. So here I, I will simulate just a steady state. Inside the numeric, there are some parameter related to the numeric numerical schemes. Of course, initial condition. So define a reasonable initial guess, guess for the computation. And important menu, which is the components one. So this is important if you starting from a scratch without CF Turbo export, so you have to define each component, each you have to define you have to define 
uh, each uh, boundary, physical boundaries, and so on. So here we have four components. So it basically follows the export from CF Turbo and uh, and the const construction workflow for each uh, for each machine. So basically, here you define several components and if you're starting from scratch, so for each STL you should define the type of the boundary. If you are not using the external mesh and, and so this software uses Snappy Hex mesh to generate the computational mesh, so you define some minimum and ref maximum refinement level boundary layers you can define and the communication between interfaces. So it means interfaces between two different components. Uh, in general, we we also provide, or this software also provides uh, the usage of an external mesh. So you can distinguish here. So external open foam mesh. It means you can use almost any external mesh which is converted to open foam and use it for for the simulation. So other parameters are related to the snappy hex mesh, which defines the maximum size of of the cell inside the inside the geometry and so on. Here. This is a nice, uh, nice sketch of the of the uh, mesh topology. Let's say so. It's really really useful when you when you starting from scratch and building the mesh from the very beginning. So you can see the topology, which part is connecting to which part, which part is rotating, and so on. So. Uh, other four menus are related to the snappy hex mesh, and, and it uh, it basically contain any parameter uh, which snappy hex mesh uses. The last one, or not the last one, but the last two I, uh, menus, there are post processing, so you can check different different boundaries to evaluate efficiencies, pressure drops, and so on, and also, it includes the scripting part, so you can load a simple Python script using which you can add your own post-processing uh, feature, or or you can define, for example, different turbulence model which is not implicitly defined here in the turbulence menu, and and so on and so on. So whenever you are satisfied with your setup, so you should confirm it by clicking on apply apply button so now the current setup is saved so this was the setting or set or this was the yeah this was the first phase of the CFD workflow so setting of the geometry and and the physical parameters and so on so now we would like to manage the simulation so to uh, to manage the simulation we need to just click on the settings item here and then there is an icon which is called TCFD manager so I, I will click on it click on apply to to enable it and now we can see here several or new bunch of of buttons and here I will explain how to run the simulation so first we can set up the directory name in which the results will be stored so, for example, my case. Anytime I change something, I need to I need to click on Apply button to confirm it. Now, I need to click on Write case, which automatically cr creates the uh, the the case structure directories and all uh, compulsory files which is needed to run the simulation. And after the case is stored, we have we have two options how to run the simulation. So first, we can we can generate the computational mesh by building components separately, or we can click on the mesh all but button to to mesh all all geometry. And afterwards, we can run the calculation, or we can we can run all these steps by one click, which is here run all. So this is as a part of an automatic run. So for example, I can first click on mesh all. So now the meshing is in progress, and you will you are always informed 
uh, of the process, of the current state of the process. So now the component one is meshing. So if I a little bit jump in time, which is uh, uh, here. So this is the step when the meshing process is done. So afterwards you can see, visualize the mesh. For example, I can visualize the volute with the component three, which is the which is the connection between impeller and and the and the volute. So if I check the show button and I click on apply, so now I can see I can see the mesh. Okay, so if I am satisfied with the mesh, I can now easily click by click on the run calculation and the calculation will 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 run. So always during the computation you are informed which point is currently computed, the estimated time of the computation and so on. Anytime during the computation you can click on update report and see the current state of the simulation. But anyway, at the end of the computation, which I have here, you can see that all progress bars show us that the process is done and the, the report is updated automatically at the end and we can we can check it here directly inside the paraview so this is the automatic report which shows you all important information about the simulation so <clears throat> because we have we simulated three speed lines so first there is three figures which shows you the overall properties of the compressor and of the results so first one shows you efficiency for each speed line total pressure difference for each speed line and of course for each point of the simulation and the last one but not least is the total pressure ratio <clears throat> okay and then afterward there is there is the detailed information for each speed line for example flow rate uh, <clears throat> within or within the simulation so for each iteration so you can see the convergence process for each point, residuals for each variable, <clears throat> sorry, you can you can read, the, for example, detailed information about the mesh, so all parameters of the mesh, like skewness or non-orthogonality and so on, Y plus parameter <clears throat> and detailed information both in, in in the form of the table for each point and also for for uh, in the form of figures and graphs <clears throat> sorry so efficiencies torques total pressure and so on so all important information are listed here in the report but anyway you can also do uh, uh, visualization post-processing or you can vis visualize the results directly inside the paraview. So, <clears throat> so for example, I will, I have prepared some visualization using the filters which are, which are standardly available in paraview. So you can visualize any part of the geometry. <clears throat> you can visualize any field, any computed field, for example, temperature. You can make the slices uh, in any part of the geometry, you can visualize, for example, the, the glaives, the <clears throat> vectors of the of the velocities at these slices. You can generate the volume volume streamlines at the at the at the blade, for example, or you can visualize the pressure counters on on the blade. So this was example of standard filters in Paraview and we have also developed the turbo machinery filters. So <clears throat> basically this is just the, the walls of the impeller and if you apply this turbo unwrap filter you can unwrap it and, in, and have so-called blade to blade view of the impeller for example with static pressure distribution you can create a slice, the radial slice, in any 
uh, and at any radial coordinates of the blade, you can visualize the streamlines with total pressure distribution. And moreover, you can also create the meridional average on the blade with, for example, total pressure distribution. So all this can be done directly <clears throat> in Paraview. So I see that my time is almost up. So as have you seen, the TCFD is a great, easy to use and powerful tool for detailed evaluation and validation of your geometries. In CF Turbo, you can design your machine and then by few clicks, even without any deep knowledge of CFD, you are able to validate your geometry. So the process <clears throat> from the CAD data to, to the data, to, uh, to the data which is imported in CFD is uh, is really really fast, and on the other hand, the CFD can be also scripted and therefore easily incorporated into your current CFD workflow. So so it can be really modified to your to your needs. So my time is up. Thank you for attention and I have to hand the presentation back to Lubos. So Lubos, can I? Uh, yes, back? yes, absolutely, yeah. Perfect, so now I okay. hand it to you, okay. Okay, thanks. So yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you Radek for your uh, live example. Uh, and now it, it's time for, for the questions and, and comments. So we will, we will open the, yeah, the questions and comments and we will, we will answer answer them so give me give me a second uh, there are questions uh, right here uh, yeah, yeah yeah we have we have several questions already so so anyway I would like to remind remind all the attendees it, now it's the, the really the time to put your questions so feel feel free to put your questions and we are going to to answer them right now <clears throat> so um, uh, yeah so there are Okay, I will start. So, uh, what is the wrap and lean angles uh, from Mr. Taha uh, Poonwala? Uh, Oliver, would you would you answer this uh, this answer to to, to the yes. all, all audience? Yes, I will. Um, the wrap angle of the impeller is just the tangential difference between leading and trailing edge at a special uh, span. So, if you uh, can make me a presenter again. I can show it also in, in CF Turbo. Um, okay. I have opened uh, the mean line design step again. Here's the 3D preview. And one can see it especially in the frontal view. That's the frontal view. And I all probably only have one blade. And if you look at the blue mean line of the of of the main blade, there is a difference in tangential direction, which is that one, between leading and trailing edge. And I can directly change it and make it smaller to the hull, for instance. And you will see immediately how it looks like. Well, maybe maybe the other direction would be better. 140, and that's the just this different is is the rep angle, and the other one is the the leading uh, the, the the lean angle, and here I use again the um, the the rake angle is the lean angle at the outer diameter. And you see here, it's it's very much uh, um, kind of bended, and I can lower this lean angle by having the wrap angle again smaller. And you see here now, this is much less uh, bended, and the the lean angle or the rake angle, because that's the last uh, lean angle. Is, is smaller and if if I have 60 degree wrap angle it's it's almost it, it goes in the other direction so maybe 70 is is good to have almost a zero lean angle or rake angle here 
Thanks. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the questions here. Okay. Yes. So the, the next question is uh, the same question that uh, Mr. Taha. Uh, uh, where can we? Uh, I'm sorry. Where can we specify the location of the splitter blades? Okay. It's it's again to be done here in the mainline uh, design step. So for instance, the leading edge position can be defined by a relative value, uh, which gives the position between two adjacent main blades. That's one thing, and the other thing is, <clears throat> of course, the meridional location of the splitter is just to be defined in the meridional design step just by grabbing um, control points of the splitter blade. Okay. Okay. Uh, very well. So, uh, yeah, and that, then we have a couple of questions from Markus Kolman. Hello, Markus, and good, mo good morning to Gunskirchen. Uh, yeah, uh, so I, I will read the question uh, number one. How to define a spreading over different calc servers in the GUI uh, directly in the TCFD file? It's possible uh, with the host command. Uh, yeah, and how to do that with graphical interface? Uh, Radek, would you would you answer it, or, or do do we know it? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I know it, and I can answer it. Uh, what the problem is now that I'm using the Windows version, and inside the Windows version, there is no possible way how to define it. Thank you. Yeah, so inside the the. It is inside the simulation part. Yeah, yeah, here, if you are in the Linux version, so here there is an additional window in which you can set the names or IP address of, of your machine, of your servers, and afterwards it is split it and distributed to all these nodes, computed nodes, and can be run in parallel on, on different CPUs or different nodes. So this is not uh, available in the Windows version, but it is available inside the Linux version. Okay, so, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So thanks for this. Uh, the next question from Marcus is, uh, is it possible to define a multiple uh, inlets uh, or outlets in the geometry? Can yes. It it, it is possible. I don't know if you now if if Marcus means the um, multiple inlets between components. For example, if we add the leakage part, so then leakage and from the impeller uh, inflows to one component, which is connected to these two. So this this is possible. And in general. Yeah, yeah, I think it is possible, but then in uh, within the graphical user interface, these multiple inlets or outlets has the same inlet boundary or output boundary condition, which is yeah. set it, which is set it. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. I think so. I think the same. Okay, so it, so it, in general, it is possible, but the boundary condition is is the same. Has to be the same. Uh, with current version, uh, yeah. And the, the last one from from Marcus is: Is it possible to show the convergence of each point separately, not the whole speed line? Okay, within the within the graphical user interface. So within the report, uh, this is not possible at the moment. So it shows overall overall uh, convergence for speed line. But if you go into the case, into the computed case, into the logs logs directory, I uh, I don't know if my screen is shared. Do you see my screen, Lubos? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Now, inside the logs, for example, if I am uh, interested in, for example, conver convergence of mm, X component of velocity, so I can go inside, and here, here is the residual, initial residual of 
for each iteration. So for example, if I extract just the iteration from 0 to 4000, so it shows me the convergence process for first point, the first speed line. Yeah, so it can be post-process, but at the moment, moment it is not available in, in the automatic report generation. Okay, thank you for this. And another question on on uh, Radek is: can, uh, can the meshing software generate both structured and as unstructured meshes? From Mr. Thomas Andreu. Okay. Uh, well, because the software is uh, is using the SnapX mesh, or it uses SnapX mesh, and SnapX mesh is the meshing tool which creates hexadominant but unstructured mesh. So the structured mesh is not possible to generate it directly within the TCFD. So if you if you would like to use the structured mesh, you should at this moment you should use the external mesh meshing tool, meshing software, and then it can be converged or and and input into into the TCFD. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for this. Uh, the next question, can the computation uh, be set uh, up to run in parallel on multiple cores? Uh, the same question, right? So, yeah, the same question as I answered already. So it is available in, in, the, in the Linux version without no limitation and it is not possible inside the Windows version. Okay, and Perhaps the, the question is asking if, if you can run multiple cores. So the question is yes, you can okay, run yes, on any, any number of cores. Yeah. Okay, of yes, course, yeah. Yes. It's standard CFD tool, so you can run, yeah. you can you can employ any number of cores uh, you want. Uh, the next question uh, is: There any special module provided in this software to work on mixture and, or two or several gases? Um, uh, maybe I can answer this. Uh, the, the current uh, TCFD version uses um, an idle gas uh, approach, so uh, no no mixtures or or real gases uh, yet. Uh, yeah, and uh, but if I can add to this, if okay. because OpenFOAM provides some some feature for mixed mixed gases, but it is not uh, implicitly available in the graphic user interface. But if it is possible in OpenFlow, it can be scripted. Yes. Okay. So with, okay. With more or less work, it would be possible. Okay. But at the moment, I can't surely say that it is possible or not. Okay. Uh, okay, so it would be a matter of, of some analysis. Uh, and perhaps the last question is, how can I use this software for energetics evaluation of the radial compressor? If, if yes, how? Uh, from Mr. Adonak Londo. Uh, I'm not sure I understand this question. Uh, uh, so the yeah, so the the the, comp the radial compressor can be can be evaluated in 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 version CFD uh, by the simulation. So I think it, that's that's what we what we've what we've shown already basically. So uh, yeah, uh, and, and the, the okay the, the very last question is: Does the software have adjoint solver? Uh, from Thomas, uh, no, it has not uh, at the adjoint solver. Uh, if you mean the the optimization tool or this, we it's in the process. Uh, we, we believe before the end of the year we will introduce uh, the optimization tool, which works well together with uh, the machine CFD, but it's it's not uh, not there yet. Uh, yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I will wait here with if answering there, there of course there are some other details but uh, I think uh, this this is it I think I think we, we should we should uh, conclude so I will take the presentation back to me and I will I'm gonna I'm gonna finish so this was the Q&A session we have answered the questions uh, so yeah it's time to finish, so feel free to contact us. I'm sure you know very well how to do that. The questions about the CF Turbo are to be sent to CF Turbo company. The questions about Turbo Machinery CFD software are about to be sent to CFD support. Uh, 
We will gladly answer all your questions. We will answer everything. We will gladly support you in your turbo machinery, turbo machinery projects. It's our job and also a pleasure for us. So I think this is this is it. So any, anything more to say? Oliver, would you? I just want to say thank you for your attention and I hope that we can get in, in touch sooner or later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, and Radek, would you, would you uh, add anything? Yeah, I, I will follow the Oliver's words. So thank you for your attention and please feel free co to contact us. We are here for you and we can help with your with, with your needs and with your problems. Thank you. Okay, very well. All right, so the same for me. So we would like to thank you for your attention. We, and we are looking forward to collaborating with you. So stay tuned and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.